Welcome to this week's episode of the Baseball Together Podcast, Baseball Family. This week we have a couple of unexpected free agent signings. Rob Manfred is at it again, and we're going to assign some free agents to their teams. Next. Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together Podcast with your hosts, Black Jack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome back to another episode of the Baseball Together Podcast, Baseball Family. As always, I am Brad, but I guess for the second week in a row, now I'm joined by our guy, Jewel. Welcome, Jewel. What's going on, Baseball Family? How are you guys doing tonight? Today, tonight? Whenever today, it today is, night. in the today future, night. from now that you're listening to the podcast, yes. we want We're to know how you're doing. You. you can let us know in the mailbag or yes. tweet at us, whatever. Anyway, um, Jewel... Tweet at you. I felt like there was a surprising amount of stuff going on over the last week, last few days, yeah. given the fact that there is literally no activity in baseball right now, since with the lockout, everything like that. But there is baseball in other places. There's there baseball is. in the KBO, the NPB, mm-hmm. and in the MILB. Exactly. We have minor. We're gonna have minor league baseball to some degree this year, and the other yeah. thing too is, I mean, we're gonna have independent ball. So if you live in a community that has oh, independent yeah. ball, you have that to look forward to. And I mean, I'm sorry to the folks, the good people in St. Paul, but unfortunately, I don't know that you're gonna have St. Paul Saints baseball this year. <laughs> You've had it every year, and then now you got this year that yeah. they're affiliated, the second year of their affiliation. You might not have St. Paul Saints baseball this year, but we'll see. We'll see what happens and uh, see how things progress. We're going to continue to update you as we are today. Let's start with this, Jewel. First and very first of all, and I feel like the least expected of them all, uh, Yasiel Puig signed a one-year deal in the KBO with your Kaiwum Heroes. Yes, I love the Heroes. Um, I don't know. He's one of those guys. He's obviously the biggest name that's signed in Mm. the NPB or the KBO so far. But there's been a lot of guys signing over there, like legit guys who could like contribute to a big league team off the bench, like a Mike Talk- Talkman, and um, there, there's been I can't remember. There's been a lot. Well, I but... mean, our guy, our guy Paul Seawald came from the KBO. Oh, and our guy. Um, uh, oh no, it's Chris Flexen. It was Chris Flexen. That's who it was. Sorry. Flexen, yeah, yep. Chris Flexen had an outstanding year in the KBO in 2020, and then he comes to Major League he Baseball. He was like a Cy Young finalist too. Yeah, he was awesome. He was like, he was the most consistent piece to the starting rotation when we were like, yeah, there's our fifth guy. That's fine. And but yeah, like, he was oh, like the our, man this year. That's our second guy. Yeah, he was. Like, that's that's our two guy after, well, now after Robbie Ray, like, yeah. It's like, that's our two guy. That can be our two guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he came back. He he revitalized his career in uh, in the KBO. I'm curious if Yasiel Puig is going to do the same thing because they don't take much crap over there. And so no. I wonder if, if this is like a something that he's doing to uh, take a positive a step in the right direction to kind of rehab his image because things oh, got a little wild in the Mexican league with him last year. Oh, it did, and this absolutely has to be like his agent Luba was like, "This is it. This is all you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. No team's gonna sign you to a major league contract. You're 30 almost." Like, no team's going to sign you. This is the only place where you can get a deal. This is your last shot. You already blew it in South America. You've basically blown it in the MLB. Mm-hmm. And now, this is it. So I think it is a great move for him to reestablish himself with power um, in the outfield and to show that he can still play and contribute. And, he, and if he's anything like he was, when he was in MLB, like when he was playing with, for the Dodgers and the Indians, like if he's anything like that at all, he's going to destroy that league. He's just going to wreck it, which would be yeah. good, which would be a lot of fun to watch. I mean, I hope if the lockout extends into the season, into spring training, things like that, I, I do hope the ESPN gets us KBO again because I'll watch it. I had a lot of fun watching it. Oh, yeah, it. same. I mean, I, mean, I, I still wear my NC Dinos inspired KBO. hat. What was that? Yeah, Nick Anderson just signed with the Padres. Out of pitching in um for Team USA, but before that oh, okay. he was pitching he was pitching overseas. Okay, yeah, I mean he just signed and a three year deal. And there's nothing wrong with it either. I mean, Adam Jones no. played in Japan last year. Nothing, there's yeah. nothing wrong at all with going overseas and playing. Um, you know, a lot of guys in the NBA when they go to like China or 
Spain or Italy or whatever to play basketball. It almost signifies the end of their career. But in baseball, it's almost like a pay a pay raise to minor league baseball. Go yeah. get yourself right, make a million and a half dollars over in well, Korea yeah. or Japan or wherever, and then come back, and then you're good to go. And yeah, in the case no, of Yasiel it's... Puig, I, I really think it's – Mostly what it is is an image rehab thing is that he's got to oh, show yeah. that he can behave himself and he can get along with his teammates and get along with other guys on the field. And, you know, I I was kind of bagging on Rachel Luba for a long time being like, why isn't Puig playing in the big leagues? But I Don't think this it. is – and that's exactly it is nobody wants him. Is that I was like, if she was a, a, as good of an agent as we all think she is, then he'd have a job. But I think this is actually a really smart move on her part to find a, to find somewhere for him to go. Yeah. No, he, find he a place needed for him somewhere. So he needed somewhere. And speaking of guys who finally who can't find a place to land, D. Mm-hmm. Strange Gordon, our sweet D, <laughs> from many years ago as Mariners fans, he jumped mm-hmm. around between four different teams last season on minor league deals. Yeah, so he didn't ever make it to the bigs last year. Nope. And now he's with the Nationals, which almost signifies a legit shot at a bench spot. I would think so with the way that team's put together mm-hmm. and the fact that they don't have, I mean, they don't have Trey Turner anymore in the infield. And, th- and I feel bad for the guy. I mean, the Mariners brought him on. They wanted to play center field because they had the, um, Jerry DePoto had the attitude that a guy that athletic ought to be able to play center field. And yeah. unfortunately for him, it just, it didn't work out. He didn't, it didn't take. Um, yeah. And I've talked about that before. The center field is the hardest of the outfield positions to play. And especially going and playing the first time, in center field at the big league level, like that's tough. That's really hard. Yeah. And I think that's what ruined his career the most was I think it is. I think there were some confidence issues and that translated over to, to the plate and he had some issues there. Um I I hope that he does make the big league roster, even if it's as like a utility guy, a pinch runner, pinch hitter, whatever, like a bench guy. I mean I want to see him want, in the big league. Doesn't want him on the bench, you know. That kind of speed, especially in the National League. Like he has the dude could get on for you. Stolen bases. The dude could get you a late inning bunt. Whether it's a sack oh, bunt yeah. or get you a base runner. Like he's good for that at the very least. Or get on as a pinch runner and steal still a few bases for you and get into into a scoring position. I think it's a good deal for the Nats, especially on a minor oh, league yeah. deal. So. Oh yeah, it's great for the Nats. I mean, he's led the league in steals three times. The NL and steals three yeah. times. Yeah. So one thing with this that I thought was interesting was the fact that this guy is a former big leaguer who made a who signed a minor league deal. And I and I don't remember if you sent the video to me, it was Rachel Luba talking about it. But she was saying that the reason he can sign a minor league deal with the Nationals is because he did not play in the big leagues last year. So he's not gonna be considered a scab. He's not gonna be considered uh, it's like it's not the Nats aren't breaking any rules because he was not in Major League Baseball last year. He can sign a minor league deal because minor league deals are still going because they're part mm-hmm. of a different union. Yep. So no problems there. Um, and kind of expanding on that too because she talked about this a little bit more and I thought this was really interesting because I I know about the concept of scabs like what you know. You've got a lockout or a strike, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you can't play games, right? And then you bring in replacement mm-hmm. players, like the movie of the replacements. And we all know the football yep. movie of the replacements. Mm-hmm. Those guys, those guys they brought in were scabs. Well, now with minor league baseball, the the way this works is if you're not on the forty man roster, you are part of the minor league system union. Mm-hmm. And so if if the owner, say the Nats owner, approaches D Gordon and says, "I want you to play, be one of our replacement players in spring training and into the big league season," if if that's the way it works, uh, D Gordon would be considered a scab, and he would not be able to be part of the union anymore, right? Yeah, and that's that for correct? that's for any guy that decides to forego. Yeah, no, that's correct mm-hmm. for any guy that really wants to, like, um, say, you know, it could be guys who have been in AAA for ten years, you know, who have made a career out of minor league baseball, um, who will likely never make it to the big leagues. Like Austin Nola, he was never supposed to make it to the MLB. Right, yeah. Um, the managers just had a need, and you know, honestly, probably felt bad for the dude. He's he's well, done great. <laughs> he learned since. how to catch. He learned how to catch. It's basically what it was. He learned how to play the catcher position, and he's like, like that's if I'm how get desperate you. he was. Yeah. And like, there's there's 
hundreds of other guys who are in that same boat mm-hmm. who are like, I'm never going to make the big league roster. Like, and they've been in the, at minor leagues for 10 years. They're 27, 28. And I'm, I'm sure there are old. guys out there like, like a Tim Wakefield. Tim Wakefield, I think was a failed shortstop. And he was like, the only way I'm going to make it is if I learn how to throw a knuckleball. Yeah. And look how that look how that worked out for him. And I'm sure there are other guys who are like, oh, yeah, I'm not pitching. Plenty. I'm not going to be a knuckleballer to get to the big leagues. And this is their shot. This is and... their only shot. But the thing is, is if they do end up doing this, then they forgo any chance at being part of the MLB union and part of the collective bargaining benefits, you know, stipend, mm-hmm. benefits after retirement, mm-hmm. um, like those long-term lifelong benefits, they forego all those for a shot to actually play major league baseball yeah. and to be part of a major league baseball team. So for some guys, it's going to be worth it. I mean, if they're mm-hmm. 28, 29, they've been playing minor league baseball. They probably have saved up a little bit of money and right. they yeah. most likely are college educated too. Cause they probably stayed in college a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they were probably six, seven, 10th round draft picks, 30, yeah. 40th, you know, well, and here's one for you. Here's one. Do you remember, did you ever watch the documentary Jordan Rides the Bus? The story about Michael Jordan uh, in minor leagues. Mm-hmm. So towards the end of that, because the whole thing is about his time in the minor league system playing for the uh, Birmingham Barons, I believe it is who it was. Um, the White Sox, because uh, there was the player strike, which is ultimately what led to Jordan going back to the NBA, because the White Sox wanted to bring him in as a replacement player because MLB was exploring the possibility of replacement players. And he straight up told the White Sox owner, he said, I can't do that. I'm part of the NBA union still. I can't, I, I can't go in and, and be a replacement player for, uh, for MLB. And that is what sent him back to basketball, is what oh. they said, is that he, was, he played in the Arizona Fall League, which is where the top prospects go. Um, they were ready to bring him up to the high high minor leagues, if not give him a shot at the big league roster, because he had made the improvements. Everybody gives Jordan a hard time about you know can't play baseball, couldn't hit the curve, but they were saying that he was making the improvements that he needed to to get to where he wanted to be on the big league roster. Yeah. But because of the player strike, that he wasn't willing to to stick around, so he went back to basketball, which I thought was so really you, interesting. So you think that maybe opens the door for like I don't know Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray to take the diamond and. I don't know. Well, because the, I mean, they're part the of the they're they're part of the NFL players union too. That's true. So I don't think they would do it. I don't think they'd do it. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's an interesting thought for sure. Because that was the first thing I thought of was like, well, maybe Kyler Murray can go play for the A's and Russell Wilson go play for the Yankees for a little bit. But I don't think they'd do it for that reason. Yeah. So probably not. No, but that's true. along those lines, though, Tim Anderson did reach out to the Bulls today because the Bulls have had like the. I think they have like 10 guys on COVID protocol right now, so they have eight active wow. players. So Tim Anderson reached out and was like, hey, hit me up. I'll come play for you guys. <laughs> he could do it. I'm sure he could do, do it. Do well. <laughs> Mookie Betts, too. Mookie Betts going to play for Mookie the Lakers. Mookie Betts can they need it. Yeah. ball, dude. He can Dude, I know he can. That dude can do ball. everything. There's he not can't. anything I, Mookie Betts can't do. Like, have you seen those videos of him, like, freaking bowling a 300, yeah. bowling one? Like, he can literally play every sport. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the thing is, and above it all, he chose baseball above everything else. It's awesome. But speaking of the the lockout and everything that's been going on, I read I read this article actually just a little bit before we came on. Um, Ian Happ with the Cubs said that the owners were only in the room for seven minutes um, the day of or the day before the lockout. Um, that the players brought this uh, all inclusive proposal about like um compensatory draft picks free agency service time all the topics they i mean it was a full proposal and the owners rejected it didn't make a counter offer and peaced out and got ready for the lockout which i think is pretty messed up because that's yeah. got to be that's got to be like planned oh yeah 100 percent. Right? it's definitely walking up to the table and saying you know i don't care we're exactly, which which to me feels like the players have a case for a um, a suit about negotiating in bad faith or not negotiating in good faith, however however you word it, I don't know, because I mean it, it's pretty clear that the owners have what they want and they're not budging, and the problem with that is that they have all the leverage. Like I was thinking about this tonight, 
like a guy like Art Moreno with with the Angels. And, and you know, every everybody else is like this that their main source of income is not their team, right? Their team is a hobby. It's an expensive hobby. So by not having a big league team play, like, yeah, they're not gaining money from ticket sales and or jersey sales, whatever revenue that comes in. But on the other hand, they're not paying the players. So Art Moreno, he or uh, Artie Art, I can't remember. Anyway, he owns the Angels. He also owns Angel Stadium. So he's not losing money on rent for the stadium. If he's like, okay, we're not planning on reaching an agreement until July. That gives me April, May, and June to book concerts and other activities at Angel Stadium that I can make money off of rather than baseball. And also, in that time, I'm not paying Mike Trout. Yeah. I'm saying $15 million. (laughs) Yes. Like, there's the problem that we have. Is yeah. that the owners have nothing to lose to sit out? No, the players have, have everything to lose. to lose. Yeah, which forces the players to compromise more so than they should because of the owners. Mm-hmm. And I mean, a guy like Art Moreno. I mean, that made me think of he's planning a huge expansion for LA Angel Stadium too. Yeah, like a massive extension. Mm-hmm. I think he would get more coming from ticket sales and um, merchandise sales and anything else to be able to do that expansion. Yeah, well, and I mean, I went to a game a few years ago, and after the after the game, uh, Ludacris performed, and I mean, he could bring in guys like Ludacris. He could bring in. I mean, I don't even know who's like contemporary these days. I don't listen. I don't, I don't listen to the popular music on the radio, Jewel. So, like, I mean, he could bring in whoever he wants to put on a concert and get Olivia just Rodrigo. as much money from that. Who is that? Olivia Rodrigo. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Olivia Rodrigo. Okay, but. Anyway, he could bring in people for concerts. He could bring in a monster truck rally. He could bring oh, in. Yeah, he could do anything. Um, he could do everything. Whatever he I mean, wants. That's a left three months. That's three months. That's 12 weekends mm-hmm. of just packing this place out with a concert, with a, mm-hmm. with multiple things. You do something during the day and then something at night. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. And so, it, I mean, he, he has no reason to negotiate with the players if it's yeah, not no. anything that he doesn't want. And, and that's the T-Mobile problem that I have. Stadium already has. You know, concerts and stuff booked in August mm-hmm. and in July and for weekends yep. that the Mariners aren't supposed to be there. So what's stopping them from saying, hey, you know, local Seattle big band person thing. Let's host more high school games. University of Washington, you want to play some games at T-Mobile? Bring it in. Oh, yeah. UW would be right there in a second. Mm-hmm. Nothing stopping college baseball. Yep, exactly, exactly right. Hey, Rainiers, do you guys want to come play your games at T-Mobile? We got nothing going on. Oh, I yeah, love I'd... to go see Rainiers at T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I, and those guys would love to play at that stadium too. Oh yeah. So, I don't know that's that's like my biggest problem with this whole thing is that the owners don't feel like they're going to budge for anything, and they don't have to. That they're just going to sit and they're just going to like basically lay a siege on the players and wait till. You know, those low level guys who are playing for the league minimum or just above are getting ready to are like, guys, I'm out of money. Like I need to play to get paid. And yeah. that's that's the issue that I have with the whole thing. But anyway, there's your weekly dose of the CBA. Um let's talk a little bit about baseballs. So so we found out that baseball had indeed juiced the baseballs. They were a little bit wound a little bit tighter, the laces were a little bit lower to reduce drag, so they're flying just a couple feet farther. Which, um, and, this, well, and this blew my mind because they made a huge deal of it before the season saying, mm-hmm. oh, we're deadening the baseball. It's going to make it so every outfield fence is like five or seven feet further away than it is. Mm-hmm. And we're going to take away sticky stuff. Yeah. And we're going to deaden the baseball. So it's going to level it out between pitchers and hitters. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> well, and <laughs> the fact that they... We're using the old baseball still this year, but didn't tell anybody. Come on now. Like, well, how did you, how do players not pick up on it? You know, I'm sure they did. I bet the I bet players tried to bring it to the attention of the umpire. You know that something's weird about this baseball. Oh no, it's fine. You know, and I think one oh, of the yeah. things that I saw in an article that I read about this was that they blamed it on supply chain issues. It's like, well, you own the supply chain. You're the ones making the baseballs. It's not, you know. It is Rawlings, but Major League Baseball owns Rawlings, so it's not like they're waiting on Wilson or some small company in the middle of nowhere to make these balls. 
they're making yeah. the balls themselves and that's the problem they're having and they're not telling the players and even if it is a supply chain issue like tell the players hey you might get some of the old baseballs in there they'll be fine just just, just be aware do you guys agree to this right yes like, hey yes. we're having an issue with supply chain there's going to be five balls per game that are going to be the old baseballs because mm-hmm. we have those available is right. that okay with you guys to play with some teams might say no say okay well let me ask the rangers or then bring in some batting practice balls <laughs> yeah bring in something like ask another team say hey this team agree doesn't want to use their dead end balls. Would you mm-hmm. like more juice balls? Will you guys agree to more? Yeah, and previous and then I'm sure balls? there were teams that would love to have those juice balls back because they could the use some offensive boost. Yes, exactly. That was the first thing that came to my mind was the Yankees, but um, and you know, speaking of the dead in baseball, though, I I was listening to some stuff. Uh, it was had to have been during the KBO season, but I was listening to some guys talking about that specific baseball because they deadened their baseball in 2020 before the 2020 season. And some guys were talking about that ball and they said, you know what? That ball is actually a lot better than the MLB ball because it's tackier. It doesn't have to be rubbed down quite so much before the game that the, the sweatier your hands get, the better you can grip it. And I wonder if it's like those kind of like those cheap perma pearl balls you get from like Walmart, you know, you know what oh, I'm talking maybe. about? Yeah. I wonder if they have the same kind of coating as that, that it's more of a synthetic than it is, um, than it is like the, the horse hide. And so I was like, you know, I don't know, but I'm curious yeah. if eventually we'll see that in major league baseball. I don't know that we will because they're definitely cheaper to make. They're not the same, uh, authentic feel of the old baseballs, but I don't know. I thought that was interesting. The guys actually liked them better. But Joel, my big question for you with this whole thing before we wrap up this segment is why doesn't Rob know what he's doing? He knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. And he's playing he's playing the victim. He's playing the He's playing the victim and playing the part like, oh well, it's not my fault. It's these guys' <laughs> fault. I didn't do it. I'm just the commissioner. I'm the one who should be taking care of the problem, yet I'm going to say it's the owners and the players association that aren't agreeing. I just signed the last line on the last page. He knows what's going on. He, he's choosing not to intervene because he knows if he intervenes, he's going to get backlash from one side. And if he doesn't support the owners, then he's out of a job. So he's being smart and keeping his job and keeping his mouth shut because he doesn't want um, Jed Hoyer to come and take his job. Jed Hoyer, interesting. The old, uh, the old Cubs GM. Yeah. Or president. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah who works in the him. who works in the MLB office? He's the next commissioner. I'm calling it right now. He's going to be the next commissioner when the owners get tired of Manfred and his stupidity, and they're going to be like, "Hey, Jed." We got the perfect job for you because he hasn't taken any GM job, operations job, or anything like that. He went to the commissioner's office. Nope. He went to the commissioner's office, works in the MLB office, and he's just been there. That is very interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. But I don't know. It's frustrating to watch Rob Manfred like just shoot baseball in the foot just constantly. You know, like the one that I one that I always bring up is uh is the the COVID season last year saying, oh, it was always 60 games when they were going through this whole thing negotiating, you know, it's like, well, why yeah. didn't you say so? Yeah, <laughs> you no, know? he knew. But like, then, he, he knows what the outcome is going to be. Yes. And I, the thing that drives me nuts, though, is the lack of transparency. And, like, I get it. Like, there are some things that he can't say, you know. Yeah. But at least say there's a plan and bring that to the players because it feels like it's really shady operations. Oh, Not yeah. at least bring some of that stuff to the players and be like, if we do this confidentially, we can make it happen. But in the meantime, if not, like we're not going to do anything about it. And part of that problem with that, I feel like, is Tony Clark because he's as much of the problem as Manfred and the owners is, yeah. in my opinion. But anyway, let's go ahead and wrap this up. When we get back from our break, we're going to assign some top free agents to teams just for fun. No matter which ballpark you're at, you want to rep your team. Now you can with 9 Plus Us. Welcome to the Big City Series. With every design available in your team's colors, you can fit in with the home crowd or stand out on the road. Either way, we have the colors you crave. 
Shop the Big City series and find designs that rep your favorite baseball podcast, cheer from the cheap seats, and much more. Shop the Big City series only at 9plusus.com. The Nonther Sports Podcast is the home of sports talk for everyone. Every other week, you can catch David and Jason as they talk about all things sports. From current events to classic moments and everything in between, you can find the Nonther Sports Podcast on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and more. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Welcome back, baseball family. Uh, so, like I said, Jewel and I are gonna gonna are gonna go through and we're gonna assign some top name free agents to their teams. Last week we did a fantasy draft. We're kind of doing a reverse draft, I guess, if you will, um, by putting guys on different teams instead of our team. So we have guys uh, just to let you know what, what we're doing with this exercise here. Is we have guys like Freddie Freeman, Chris Bryant, and Drelton Simmons, Nick Scott, Nick Castellanos, uh, Nelson Cruz is on the list. And we also have, uh, is it Seiya Suzuki? Seiya Suzuki. Okay, he's coming over from Japan. If you're not aware of him, I read something the other day. Somebody said he's going to be better than Ichiro, which is a tall order. But the fact that somebody was with it enough to say that, it's a big deal. So he's, we're going to end it with him. But let's start with Freddie Freeman. Jewel, who do you have Freddie Freeman going to? I got him going back to Atlanta. Yeah? Why, why there, Atlanta? He's going, back, he's going back to Atlanta. He's going to go back there on a, I don't know, seven-year deal. Um, they're going to pay him. He is, he is the emotional leader of that Braves team. He's been there for 12 years in the organization. He came up when he was 20. He's 31 now. So, I mean, maybe a five-year deal, realistically. A five-year 120 to 150. Um, because that's their guy. That is their guy. This Braves team would not have had any success without a guy who's been a one, two, three, four, five, by six time top ten MVP candidate. Five time All Star. Five time Gold All-Star. Glover, three silver slugs. Three silver slugs. Yeah. He did actually get one MVP. One MVP, but he finished in the top ten five times. Mm-hmm. Like he's he is everything. He is the Braves. Mm-hmm. The Braves do not go to another World Series without Freddie Freeman. The Braves aren't competitive without Freddie Freeman. Even mm-hmm. mid to late 30s Freddie Freeman, his power is going to age really well because his swing is going to age really well. He doesn't try to mm-hmm. do too much. He has great athleticism for a first baseman. So he's going to, his position with his power and everything just ages really well. And I don't think the Braves can let him go. Yeah, and at 6'5, I agree with you. He's got to go back to the Braves. At 6'5, like he's got the length that he doesn't need. He doesn't need to get a whole bunch of torque from his hips to, to hit the ball hard. The, nope. All he has to do is get those arms extended, and it's going out. So, yep. so yeah, his swing is going to age really well. Um, first base is the perfect spot for him because his body will age well with it. And with, a yep. universal, with the potential of a universal DH starting in 2022, Guaranteed. there's no reason for them to get rid of him at all. Because even if they no, have a young they, first baseman coming up, they're going to want his bat and his leadership in the clubhouse for, yeah, I'm going to say, they, six years. Because he just turned six 32. Years. Yeah, he okay, just yeah. turned 32 no, in year, September. Yeah, a six-year one, six year 150 to 180, like, they're going to have to pay him upwards of $30 million if they want to keep I was gonna, him. I was going to say six years uh, 180 was what was my target for him. I feel like that would be a reasonable, is, reasonable deal for a guy of his age. <sighs> I know, but I, I think we're going to see guys fair. coming out a little bit lower on this on the, the back side on of the CBA. On the back CBA. end, yeah. I mean, he's put together he, – he has single-handedly won 43 games for the Braves over his career. He has. And uh, up to this point, let me see if I can – let me find his uh, career earnings real quick. He's already earned $133 million. So another 30 a year for him, another 180 over, um, over six years for him. I don't feel like that's unreasonable. It is a pay cut. Oh, I, actually, no, that's a pay raise by $8 million a year. Yeah, no, and he so, deserves it. If there's anyone that's mm-hmm. deserving of $30 million at mm-hmm. this point in his career, coming off a World Series, previous MVP, 
Freddie Freeman. Like yes, no one doesn't love Freddie Freeman. Frederick. Yeah. He's my favorite Brave and yours. All right. So Freddie Freeman going back to the Braves. I'm going to start with Anthony Rizzo. Um, Rizzo to me is a tough one. I'll be honest with you because I don't think he'll go back to New York. I don't think he enjoyed his time as a Yankee enough to want to go back. I know every Yankee fan thinks that everybody loves being a Yankee because you're wearing those pinstripes. Anthony Rizzo is the exception, not the rule. Um, Man, out of all these guys, he's the one I looked at and I was like, I honestly don't know. Um, I could see him going back to Boston, potentially. Um, I think it depends on what Schwarber does. Um, I like, I feel like if Schwarber goes to Boston, I don't think Rizzo will because there's a couple spots for him there with first base and the DH. Um, but, uh, but that's where I'm going to put, put Rizzo is Boston. And if we're doing contracts, I'm going to give him, uh, probably a five year deal at 140, I would think. Okay. You know, I I like Rizzo. Rizzo, he's like one of the him and him and Frederick, two best personalities in the MLB. Yes, yes, I agree with you. By far, like first basemen's always have a good personality. Like Pujols, we have to Cabrera. I was watching an interview with Joey Votto on Dan Patrick a few weeks ago, and he's like, he's like, do you have to be social to be a first baseman? He said, absolutely, you have to be. You have to be social because everybody's coming to you. You got to be able to talk to these guys when they get when you get there. You're yeah. holding them on. You got to have a conversation with them. Can't be awkward. And Rizzo, he just he's just cute when he smiles too. Like not in a weird way, <laughs> but like he's just very like aesthetically pleasing when he smiles. He is. And speaking of personality, uh, did you see? So I think the Cubs played one of the first games in the 2020 season, and yeah. first guy gets on base and he pulls out a bottle of hand sanitizer. Yep, that was yep, like that was classic for, yeah. Rizzo. That's a classic Rizzo move, and I loved every bit of yeah, it. Yeah, no, Rizzo is great. Um, I would love to see him back in Boston. I think Boston is a perfect fit. I think Boston needs Rizzo. Yes. Like, because they, um, you know, Bobby Dalback is not the answer at first base. Um, you know, Rizzo would be a great fit in Boston. The only other team... If I had to put him somewhere that could really, really use a solid, steady, consistent first baseman that might pay for him is Milwaukee. Yeah. They haven't had a consistent first baseman. They need someone, and I think Rizzo could fit with Milwaukee. And I agree, you know, five years, 140, 150. Mm -hmm. So... But he won't sign until Freeman signs. No, he won't. No, because I think he's going to try to piggyback his deal. Yep, one hundred percent. I don't know. If he's going to. I don't know. If he's necessarily going to try to one up it because I don't think teams will do that. But I think. No. I think he's going to try to piggyback his deal and get similar yes. to what he got. Yep, and if Freeman so. doesn't resign with Atlanta, they go hard after Rizzo. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have Trevor Story. Trevor Story. Shortstop, formerly with. The Colorado Rockies no longer employed by them, in the words of Garrett Cole. Oh man, oh, Trevor Story. There's so many places where he could fit because he does have the potential to be able to play the outfield. Um, I don't think he ever will. I think he's more suited for his shortstop, second base, um, of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that I, I think that he goes to. I hate it, but I think he goes to New York. He goes to the Yankees because I think if anything, they need they need him. They do need him like desperately. There, so him and our next guy, I think the Yankees would like way overpay for because they need the shortstop position. Um, that being said, I don't have Trevor Story going to New York. Um, I have Trevor Story going to Seattle. This is obviously a wish list item of mine. I would love to have Trevor Story in Seattle. Not as a shortstop, though, because J.P. Crawford is the guy. I think he would make the switch to third base, and he would make it very well. Part of that is I think he could age well at that position. Don't require as much range. You don't have to chase those balls into foul territory. Let J.P. Crawford take care of that. Um, Just focus on scooping the ball at third base and uh, hitting dingers. 
That's all I ask of you, Trevor Story. And let's give him all the money. Just give it all to him. I don't care what it is. Just give it all to him. Do That's, you think he gets a ten year? Uh, I hmm, at twenty nine. Let's see. He's hmm. Eh. That's I'm tough. I'm getting a seven. I'd I'd give see him a seven. I'd give him eight. Yeah. And then trade him after seven. I can see a seven with <laughs> I can see a seven with an option. There you go. Seven plus one. I see a seven yeah. a seven two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. No, for story, yeah. 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 Two hundred is a pretty good stuff. deal for Trevor Story though. Yeah, and the Mariners have given it out before. For worse. They have. Yeah. It's true. So. I yeah, I think and honestly, I think his down numbers this year are the result of him being disgruntled for not being traded at the trade deadline. Oh yeah. That he was not a guy who was willing to play for the Rockies after they told him they were going to move him. Oh yeah. So that's because two he years. was a he was the last let's see what uh last four years he's been top fifteen in the MVP voting, top ten once, and then this year he goes and he hits uh he hits two fifty one. He does nothing. nothing with granted he had twenty four home runs, but that ties him for his second lowest I mean, aside from the COVID year, that was what he hit his second year in the league. And one of his, his second worst OPS at 801. So I think he, I really think he mailed it in after the trade deadline, which I'm fine with a guy like that because the Rockies showed him that there was not going to be any loyalty there. They told him they were going to move him. They did not. I'm fine with it. I don't feel like there's an attitude issue there because he's a guy who comes and plays hard and plays really, really, really well. So I yeah, want him. No. I agree. And then there that leads us to our next guy who also plays really, really well, really, really hard, and goes 110% all the time. Carlos Correa. My time. So I have to say this. Um, I think I can't remember former if I said it on the podcast one overall, or not. Former norm, number one overall pick, rookie of the year, just been sensational since day one, literally since day one. Yes, and continues to be. So and yeah, he gets when better. when he did that, when he did the whole thing with the with the watch in the World Series and hit that home run, I really thought he was going to undo the wrist guard, undo the arm guard, and it would just drop him at home plate and then go on his drop. Like once once I thought that was going to happen, I desperately wanted it to happen. I was okay with the Correa time. I was okay with the watch the watch tap. Um, but so Correa, I feel like is going to New York. I feel like the Yankees are going to give him everything that he wants and he's going to go to New York and he's going to embrace the culture. He's going to love being cheered by the fans. He's going to love being booed by the fans. Cause he is a guy who's self-aware enough for the most part. I feel like to be like, yeah, I deserve to be booed when I'm being booed. Yeah. Like and he, he suffered through it in Houston. He did, and he performed the entire time. Yeah, he, he's the one guy who did, and his. Yeah, I I think that New York, the Yankees in particular, is a is an outstanding fit for him, and yeah, they're going to give I mean, him, man, they're going to give him what? They'll probably give him thirteen years because he's only twenty seven. I bet they'll give him thirteen years, so four hundred million. Yeah, no, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, you know, I think Korea. He's so good. He is so good. I hate how uh, good he is. I wish he would go to the National League so we didn't have to deal with him at all. Dude, same. Oh my go God. to the Mets. <laughs> they got Lindor. They do. He's not leaving. He's not leaving. He's not going to no. go somewhere and not play shortstop. Yeah. No, he's he's a shortstop. For um, he's a platinum glove at, at shortstop. So. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the contract, you're right. I think it is a possibility of a 13 mil, 13 year deal. Uh, New York makes a lot of sense. I'm trying to think of somewhere else. Uh, this is gross, but if there's a team that's going to do it, and a team that's going to way overpay for a guy, it's the Dodgers. I don't think they give him the long-term deal that he wants, though. I think if he was going to go somewhere and uh, and be on an expensive short-term deal, I think he would have stayed in Houston. But on the other hand, he's also demonstrated that he does not want to be in Houston anymore because he's turned down multiple offers from the Astros. I could also but, see another – do you want to know who could use another big ego? Who's that? The, the Phillies. <laughs> they have so many in that clubhouse already. <laughs> but, I mean, they already have Harper. But, I mean, very similar profile, very similar pedigree, very similar, like, age when they got the big deal. 
very similar, yeah. like, makeup, stats. Like, those guys back-to-back in a lineup is, like... Oh, my gosh. That'd be so dangerous. Potato, potato. It's, like, the same You put player. Correa on bef- in, in the lineup before Harper, and he's actually hitting two run homers instead of solo shots. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I could see it with the Phillies, and Dombrowski has said he wants to land a big shortstop. Yeah. Man, that'd be... That'd be crazy, that locker room, though, man. So do you, how do you think he would play with with Gene Segura? Do you think they – I mean, I'm sure they'd play well together. Segura's I mean, a, no, because Segura, Segura wouldn't move to second. I think he's been playing second because they had uh, Didi Gregorius playing shortstop. Yeah. I mean, so they would I'm, have Bohm, Correa, Gene Segura, Reese Hoskins, Bryce Harper, JT Real Muto – that's pretty solid. As long as Bohm's hitting and Hoskins is hitting the way that they can, it's a pretty solid lineup. I'd make that deal yeah. if I was the Phillies. Yeah, I can see it. I can see the Phillies doing it. They did it for Bryce. They did. Yeah. Same same kind of player. Um, that leads mm-hmm. us into Chris Bryant. the next guy, Chris Bryant. This is the guy that I got going to Seattle. Yeah. This is the Jerry DePoto guy. He this is. is the, this is the Jerry DePoto guy. You're like, right. Chris Bryant is the guy that Jerry DePoto has said this is the kind of, he has basically said we want Chris Bryant without saying we want Chris Bryant. Like Yeah. Like I think I mean, you're it's right. Hard, it's, it's hard to deny. It's like you know, they didn't get semi in so what? Cause, probably because they were waiting for Bryant. Uh, well, I, the thing with Simeon is that I mean he did have this he had this outstanding year in Toronto at second base. Um, and the Mariners are very familiar with him since he was in the AL West uh, mm-hmm. with the A's, but he's playing shortstop. So I think the whole league has been like, okay, Simeon is a second baseman. He's not a shortstop, but can he still reproduce the year that he put together at second base for somebody else or because he, he was in a contract? He had a top three MVP. He was a fi- MVP finalist at shortstop with Oakland. Oh, was he? I didn't know about the – I, I must have missed the yeah. – uh, yeah. I mean, I know he's good. I always called him Trevor Story light, but Trevor Story might be Marcus Simeon light. So yeah, I don't know. no, I think it's I think that's more accurate. I mean, so the KB's turning thirty. Um, you know, coming off a year where he didn't hit for a ton of power, but he's never really been like a huge power guy right. since he won the MVP. You know, and I don't know. I think his versatility, being able to play infield, outfield. All over the place. He can literally play every position except catch and pitch. That's what the Mariners need. And they can put him at third base. Mm-hmm. And then if there's an injury in the outfield, they can bring up someone from the minors and plug him in anywhere. So I think just the roster flexibility, Seattle on a, I don't know, eight year, because he, he's a Boris Corp, so he's going to get a gross amount of years. Um, I don't think I don't think Boris years. is will I don't think Boris will let him sign for anything less than ten years. Yeah, and I think the I don't think he'll get him in the room. I think it will get him in the room if the, two of those years are option years. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. And then I don't know. Chris Bryant's body looks like it's one that could turn. I mean, six five, two thirty. He could turn into a legit DH. He could. He could turn into a first baseman too with a glove like that. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he's played some first base. Mm-hmm. So that's like so. the tall. He's got to be one of the tallest third basemen in the history of baseball. 6'5? Six, 6'5, five? Six, five, yeah, I'm reading it right now. Man, that's nuts. Um, So I, he's obviously not going back to San Francisco. I don't think he's going back to Chicago. I feel like there was some, uh, I don't want to say bad blood, but I, I think maybe he felt like he was kind of burned by the Cubs when they traded him. Oh, yeah. uh, even though he, I'm sure he obviously knew it was coming. I mean, he cried. Um, he did. Yeah, and I'd be upset. I don't blame him. But anyway, um, I'd like to see him in Seattle. This is my thing: is if the Mariners don't get Story, I want him to. Get, I want him to get Chris Bryant. Um, see, I'd because... have Bryant over Story. Would you? Yeah. Um, man, it's tough. Um, how about he goes to? The my goodness, not the Dodgers because they have Turner. Yeah, they do. What if he goes to Colorado? He's no, that organization's too dysfunctional. That would for be him. 
that would be strictly a money deal, but that's not on character as oh, Boris client. No. I I mean they didn't want to pay story. I don't think they would want to pay KB. Yeah. It's true. They played they paid Nolan Arenado and they traded him away. So yeah, you're right. No uh no Colorado. Um he could be another he could be another uh option for the Yankees. Yeah, no. I feel yeah. like Boris has the Yankees on speed dial. One, send. Mr. Cashman, how much are you willing to pay my my client? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris Bryant here. Know. You're my first call. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Chris Bryant for me was the yeah, was actually the hardest one out of the whole group because I don't know because I'd like to have him Seattle, but I don't know where he would go other than that. Yeah. No. So. I mean, I can't even see him in Toronto. Really, Toronto's going to spend on someone. They have to. They're going to have to to bring somebody in to fill in the holes there. Um, I saw the other day somebody said Anthony Rizzo to the to the Blue Jays. I was like, no, what are you going to do with Vladdy? You're not going mean, to. No, I guess you can have him with that. DH, but no. Anyway. All right, that. next we have Andrelton Simmons at shortstop. Now. Cincinnati. Oh, really? No, They're shortstop no, just one rookie of the year. They got India. Ah. See, I have Simmons going to Toronto. No, they have Boba Shett. Put him in second base. Oh, yeah. Well, put Boba well. at second base. True. Yeah, I can see Simmons fitting there. I mean, it's not anywhere close to semi in, but. No, but, I mean, he's a more affordable, ver- a more affordable version of semi in. Very true. So, yeah, yeah I, I feel like he could there. go there and fit in. I haven't been able to think of anywhere to put Anderson Simmons, so. Okay. What about Nick Castellanos? Oh. Uh, uh, he's. You <laughs> do know you not like Castellanos? Two places. I do. I just, uh, I don't know. I think there's two places where he could do really well. Two places that he could do really well because the managers can handle him. Okay. And I think those two places are Detroit and the Chicago White Sox. I don't know if he'd get along with Larusa though. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think he would do well in Detroit. I think if anyone that's going to sign in Detroit off of this list, it's going to be Castellanos. I because agree they got you. Baez, they got yeah. Miguel Cabrera, they got the young pitching. Like the chance to win is there. Like the only real competition in that division is the White Sox. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Uh, yeah, no, I had him going to Detroit too because he doesn't have to be the guy to carry the team. Which he has the personality to do it. I'm sure he has the confidence. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be, like if he had to carry a team, I don't think he would shy away from it because he did a lot for the Reds this year. Um, mm-hmm. But to get a, a team to the playoffs, he doesn't. You don't want him as your top guy. And you've got Baez and you've got Miggy. I think he is a strong number three, possibly number two, depending on the kind of year Baez has. Yeah, that's true. I think another place I could really use him is Milwaukee because they need someone to take pressure off of Yelich. They do. Desperately. They desperately need a star to take pressure off of Yelich. Mm-hmm. I mean, you yeah. saw once Braun hit his decline, Yelich could not carry the load. Yeah. He's this good. This is crazy. Yelich the Brewers had talented. the best outfield in baseball there for a couple of years, and then now it's like, geez, get him somebody. Yeah. It's like and literally yeah. anyone on this list would be great. Mm-hmm. Yelich would be like, I don't care who you get. Get someone, please. Get, get me Kyle another Seager. bat. <laughs> Get Kyle Seeger for all I care. Yeah. I'm sure he'd hit really well in Milwaukee. Oh, he would do so well in Milwaukee. I, that's one place I would love to see him go. Yeah. That, that, that'd be a great spot for him. Wasn't on the list, but we'll do it. Okay. Nelson Cruz. Speaking of former Mariners. Bring him yeah. back, baby. Bring, Bring him, him back, back to Seattle. Bring him back. Okay. Bring him back to Seattle. I think we've had this conversation. The outfield in Seattle is awfully crowded right now, and our guy Kyle Lewis is probably going to be the DH going forward. Do you want an aging Nelson Cruz hitting in Seattle over a young, fresh, and full of pop Kyle Lewis? Is that what you? Is that really what you want, Joel? Because I don't. No, no, I don't. But like, I do because like just the clubhouse presence of Nelson Cruz. Everybody loves that guy. That's for sure. I mean, it's just like, it's what the Mariners need. Like, between, like, the addition of Robbie Ray and you bring in Nelson Cruz, like, your clubhouse is a lock. 
like with leadership. Yeah, I, I do think. I don't know, I because I feel like Mitch Haniger and J.P. Crawford have done a lot to take out take oh, yeah. on that role the last yeah, couple months true. of the season. Uh, so I think they're fine there. I actually, if I'm Nelson Cruz, I'm going back to Tampa. There is zero pressure to perform there, like <laughs> none whatsoever. And he could hit the balls into the into the Stingray tank all day long, and everybody would love. Oh him. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, he hit I him up on the catwalk, hit him to the back wall, hit him in the fish tank, everywhere. And he could go up there and strike out 150 times during the year. Nobody would care. They have no cares. Like It's like, oh, cool, Nelson Curtis, good job, dude. Yeah, no big deal. The smile looked Tampa. pretty in your 40s. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's the thing is he's in his 40s. He's going he's to hit a wall at some point unless Tampa he's Bay, decent again. Tampa Bay, is, Tampa Bay is great for guys in their 40s. Exactly. Retirement community. The humidity yeah. is excellent for your joints. Him and Brady can get along. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. All right. Carlos Radon, starting pitcher. Who needs starting pitching? Everybody. Actually, no, yeah. not really. Um, you know, there's some teams that would probably pay up for him. Like the Red Sox are set. The Yankees could possibly swing for him. If we're looking AL, and the Astros, the Astros would absolutely love to have Rodon. Oh my gosh, they'd be so scary if they added him to that rotation. They they need him. I mean, because they don't have Granky anymore. Yeah, only have they two young have... studs already to anchor that staff. They had him as if they had him That's coming true. in as the one or the two to help those young guys. They'd be scary. Yeah. I'd be I'd be so mad if that. Happened. Yeah, because they've had two pitchers back to back now and second runner up for rookie of the year. Yeah. 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 No, I think I would say Houston. Houston could make a play. Um, I I'd see him going to the Dodgers. The Dodgers, Dodgers are okay. going to need another starting pitcher. Um, Trevor May is has been good, but he's coming off of Tommy John, and you don't know where he's going to yeah. be at. Like I like that guy, but man, he's he's like freaking nuke Lelouch, man. You don't know where it's going. He doesn't know yeah. where it's going, and especially coming off Tommy John, you don't know where he's going to be. But you've got Walker Bueller, Carlos Rodon. And um, he who shall not be named. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I honestly can't think of, think of his name off the top of my head right now. But TB Trevor Bauer, you're right. TB. Yeah, like that pitching staff with those four guys, and you're not playing. You give him Clayton Kershaw's money. It's, it's dangerous. That's really scary. You, know, you have to give him Clayton Kershaw money, which is the next guy on the list. Exactly. Um, the Dodgers are going to re- bring back Clayton Kershaw. That's going to be you, a short-term deal, so? two or three years, not a ton of money. And I think they're just going to bring him back to say, hey, you know, this is – and he's going to be like, this is home. Like, this is it. Like, I need to make a last run <laughs> at it. And you guys give me my best shot. I will take the pay cut finally to play and compete for this organization. I think mm-hmm. he comes home. I don't think he goes anywhere else because I don't think anywhere else really wants him. Yeah, and except the Cardinals. Uh, the Cardinals. The Cardinals, the Cardinals like would their love life. Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, Absolutely Cardinals or because Dodgers for me. This is the thing: is that Kershaw is only thirty-three, but he feels like he's about thirty-nine or forty. Yeah, with the way he's been pitching lately, and he has reinvented himself. Like he's still pretty decent, but I don't know that I would want him in the postseason just because there are a lot of miles on that arm. Yeah, uh, and deep you, into the postseason, and you have basically an entire Gold Glove defense in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that would be the perfect spot for him. And having a guy like like Yachty calling his pitches behind the plate for a year that'd be that'd be scary. <laughs> oh. So, what about this? What if the Cardinals bring him in on a two year, fifty million dollar deal? Oh, a Verlander deal, absolutely. Yeah, I think that would be the money spot for him. And then I think he calls it a career in St. Louis. Yeah, no, I can see it. I mean, he could legit win the title there. He could. Yeah, I could see it. That team, if, if that team hits, man, they're so dangerous. They're so dangerous. All right, let's go to Eddie Rosario. So Eddie Rosario played for the played the second half of the season with the uh, with the Braves. He got traded away, and he ended up being the NLCS MVP. Um, I guess traded away. The Braves traded for him. Anyway, depends on your perspective, I guess. 
I mean, I think the Braves would love to have him back, but I think they have to figure out their outfield with, you know, with what they have now because they'll have Ozuna coming back. Don't know about the DH. Um, Mm -hmm. And I honestly think he'll sign before they get to figure that out. Um, Well, and Acuna is going to be coming back at some point. And, yeah, no, exactly. And they don't know, need a right outfield, fielder. So. Yeah. I don't know. Ugh. If I'm the Braves, I'd bring him back, though. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Like that Because he's, he's an affordable option, and he's going to do really well for you. He's going to contribute, and he's going to help. I mean, he was a big contributor. You could bring him back and not bring back Solaire, and you'd be fine. I guess depends on what you do with Solaire, because they could trade him away and get some pretty good assets. But yeah. I don't know. Or let him walk and keep Solaire. I don't know. Yeah, no, I think the Braves would be a great spot. I don't know. I think he kind of wore out his welcome in the AL between the Twins and the Red Sox. And I think he's just kind of worn out his welcome. Oh, yeah, Cleveland. Um, Yeah, he was with Cleveland. He was with the Twins. Um, I think he's just kind of worn out his welcome in the AL. Um, Maybe. I could see. I was going to say, maybe Oakland would bring him in, but I don't know if they'd want to pay for him. No. They would trade for him from Miami. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> maybe that's where he goes is Miami, and then part of the season Miami. they trade for him on a one-year deal. If he maybe he signs a one-year deal with Miami, and then uh, and then the A's trade for him because he's an expiring <laughs> contract. <laughs> I mean, they've done it. They did it with Starling Marte, so I mean, exactly. I know. What about what about that though? What about Miami? I mean. I think they're just like they're so quiet. I mean, Kim Ying and Derek Jeter have done a really good job of putting together a a low key, like really sneakily competitive team with Don Mattingly. Like, yeah, we knew the Johnny 2020. Baseball. Yeah, we knew the 2020 Cinderella Marlins weren't going to be a thing. But no, Sixto Sanchez not. will be healthy. Sandy Alcantara just got that nice five year. Jazz Chisholm is one of the most exciting young players in the game right now. I like that guy exactly. a lot. He's really good. Yes. They have a good. They have a very good solid team not like um you know they still have you know jesus garcia garrett cooper brian de la cruz jimmy garcia uh um, they could they could be contenders in 2024 i don't know that rosario is their move right now um but maybe in like two maybe in two years that's a that, that's a deal that they make you yeah know? yeah and i or, mean they did just get jacob stallings and joey wendell yeah. I mean, they needed Stallings right. to be able to lead that pitching staff, and that pitching staff is really good. So, I yeah. don't know. They have Abasil Garcia, too, they got on a four-year deal. Like, mm-hmm. they're loading up. Like, the AL East is wide open. It is. <laughs> it is. It's such a mess. And, you know, the Phillies should win that thing. Well, I, I shouldn't say the Phillies should win that thing, but they should come in second place behind the Braves for sure. But, man... It's wide open. Like, I don't know. I remember what statting it out last year. I yeah. statted it out last year, and all these teams have the potential to be plus 500 teams. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And, and that might be the move for him is to go to Miami and help build up that team and be a – and if they sign him to a long-term deal, then he could be the guy who leads them through the playoffs or leads them yeah. at least for a, a deep run. But yeah. let's let's go on to our last guy here. We have Sia Suzuki coming over Oof. from Japan. He has, I think, twenty days to sign a contract once this, once the lockout ends. And there are several teams uh, that have been pursuing him. Like, I mean, he's he's Otani two point basically coming over. Not the same position. He's an outfielder, but yeah. he's that big of a deal. He's way bigger. He's a way bigger deal than than uh, Yusei Kikuchi was coming over and ended up with this with Seattle. Um, but I mean, he plays third, short, and right. So versatile just, can hit. Who do you? Th- where do you think he goes? Who do you think gets? I him? mean, so he's twenty seven. He carries a ridiculous OBP of four hundred two. I'm like looking at his stats and I'm like amazed. Um, <laughs> he's like a gold glove MVP, like everything. I think. Yeah, he's the man, man. Yeah, he's good. And we have seen a tendency for Japanese players to stay West Coast. 
They don't really like going Except out Except for Matsui and Daisuke. Dice K, Matsui, Tanaka. Mm -hmm. A few of those guys. So we either see them go East Coast, West Coast. Big market teams. Mm -hmm. um, LA, New York, Seattle has landed their fair share. Uh -huh. And they don't need him. But I think they'll do it if the price is right. And it could be because they still have money. Um, the Mariners could go after him. They're going to. And They're making a run, and I hope they get him. They they were they whiffed on Shohei Otani. They were the runner up for Shohei Otani. And, the, and, I bet and you know, Otani is at first it was looking right like who not signing. Dodged a bullet on that one, but now it's like two run two turns of Tommy John later, and the dude's out here throwing well, bullets and hitting bombs. Like I bet geez. even he's regretting it right now because he's like, I could be in Seattle. It could be contending. I could be contending in Seattle right now, but instead I'm stuck here in LA. Mm -hmm. And I think Mariners would have made the playoffs this year if they'd had Otani. Oh, one hundred percent. They would have made it last year and this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think Suzuki, with his power, his age, his versatility, the fact that he can hit, play third, play short, outfield. Um, I don't know. It's hard to see not a great fit with the Mariners. And then, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. We talked about guys who DePoto likes. Chris Bryant can play third base, first place, first base outfield. DePoto likes to move guys around. He likes guys who are versatile, who can move around situationally and can play different positions every single day. I think that's why he goes to Seattle is because he sees the opportunity to play more than just the outfield, more than and just his, third base. He's played 73 games at third base. Yeah. He's played 67 games at shortstop. I think that he sees the opportunity to play more than just one position and to get in the lineup and hit every day because the Poto figures out a way to get guys at bats if they're hitting. Oh, if you're yeah. hitting, you're going to hit. He always has. Yeah. So, yes, because you know the Poto and Service are putting together that lineup together. And if you're hitting, you're if you're if you're hitting well, you're going to continue to hit. So, oh, yeah. I think that he's, he's going to see like, that opportunity. And even if you're not, you know, we need an upgrade at catcher at DH, you know. Uh -huh. Um, Luis Torrin is not a DH. He's not, he's definitely not the solution. I'm sorry. I yeah. mean, you could put, yeah. I mean, you said it, Kyle Lewis coming back. Yeah. We need a DH. Yep. Yeah. We need yeah. a DH and Kyle Lewis. We need someone to take outfield reps. I don't mm -hmm. think we'll ever see the Holy Trinity. I don't think outfield. we will either, but you know what? If the Holy Trinity consists of, um, Julio Rodriguez, Suzuki, Suzuki, Suzuki and, and a hitting, a hitting, Jared Kelnick, I'm here for that. Because Kelnick, saw, he showed after that, after he hit the drove in the game winning run down here in Arizona, uh, he something clicked. He's like, and oh, he was... Tom, <laughs> I'm a big leaguer. <laughs> it's probably but, having the grandparents there. It's probably like, it, it had to have been. It had to have helped having the grandparents there. For those of you who don't know that story, I ran into Jared Kelnick's grandparents after the game. I saw them wearing his jerseys. And I said, hey, I hope you're going to show up tomorrow night, too, wearing that same jersey. And they said, well, we better. We're his grandparents. <laughs> what? It was awesome. Yeah. But anyways, um, but with that baseball family, let us know what you think about our free agent assignments. Um, it was a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Maybe I should have prepared a little bit more. But it was a lot of fun. Nonetheless, <laughs> I think we had a good time doing it. Let us know what you think. Reach out on Twitter, uh, at Baseball, the number two, gather, or drop something in the mailbag. There's a link down in the description of every episode, or go to BaseballTogether.com. You can find the link there. And while you're on the interwebs, on your phone or computer, don't forget to hop by the shop at 9plusus.com. Spell it out, N-I-N-E-P-L-U-S-U-S.com. Tonight I have my uh, Heroes Get Remembered but Legends Never Die shirt with my, as usual, my pirate baseball hat uh, on backwards because of my green screen and everything. But anyway, Jewel, thank you again for jumping on with me the last minute. Of course. Fantastic having you on as always. And I, you're going to be back next week, right? The next week? Yeah, because next week we are uh, we're doing Next week we're doing baseball shopping. Santa. Next week we're, we're doing, doing baseball Christmas. Santa. We're writing our wish list to Santa. So, so make sure you tune in for our annual baseball Santa episode. And with that, baseball family, we will catch you next week. Mm -hmm.